Hello from Germany. My name is Florian Wolling. I'm research associate and PhD candidate of the Ubiquitous Computing Lab at the University of Siegen. Today I'm presenting our research on the optimal preprocessing of raw signals from reflective mode photoplatismography in variable devices. Over the past decade, a vast number of variable devices such as fitness trackers reached the market. Along with their emergence, the optical measurement principle photoplatismography had a revival. It transformed from the traditional transmission mode applied in clinical settings to the reflective mode for the continuous ambulatory monitoring in everyday life. Algorithms running on variables are designed for the efficient and accurate tracking of the various heart rate and heart rate variability. Their evaluation is usually based on small datasets with a limited evidence. Larger benchmark studies using the same database are however not available. The algorithms are often evaluated either on closed recordings or on public datasets that stem from clinical pulse oximeters, applying the transmission mode. Alternatively, large field studies regularly deploy commercial wrist one devices such as the popular Empatica E4 to guard the medical grade recordings. In our previous research, we noticed that most of these datasets do not contain the advertised raw, but conspicuously filtered signals. Nevertheless, diverse publications and algorithms are based on or have been evaluated with such convenient data. For more details, please refer to our paper mentioned below. In general, the use of raw signals demands for more effort and background knowledge. Especially due to the noisy contour and interference, the time series often appear to be cumbersome and unattractive at first glance. The raw PPG signal consists of diverse frequency components. There is of course the wide frequency band of the natural heart rate itself. Since respiration modulates the blood flow in multiple ways, also the respiratory rate is present. Additionally, there is a predominant DC offset due to the light's constant reflection in the skin, as well as distortion and 1 over F noise. The loose attachment of variables also induces diverse types of motion artifacts. Furthermore, particularly the overlapping frequency bands are not easy to distinguish. We hence searched for configurations that have successfully been applied in publications. Unfortunately, the applied filters are often rarely documented and we found only 14 publications which specify the passband limits. Since the optimal cutoff frequencies largely depend on the signal characteristics, they are often unintentionally fitted to the available and applied signals. The lower cutoff frequency is usually placed at the lower bound of the natural cardiac frequency band. Depending on the intended application, also the respiratory frequency band is of interest and either explicitly included or excluded. In contrast, the placement of the upper cutoff frequency shows a greater variety. Besides the upper bound of the heart rate, it also depends on the applied algorithm and the desired number of harmonics to shape the pulse peaks. Datasets of actual raw measurements are scarce. We finally found a dataset of raw reflective mode PPG that enables the benchmark of algorithms on a neutral basis. The dataset of Biagetti et al. from 2020 contains 286 minutes of measurements, directly obtained from the analog sensor front end, shown on the right, and sampled at 400 Hz. Seven subjects performed the three exercises rest, squat and step. Unfortunately, the dataset does not provide any ground truth information. Consequently, an expert rater was asked to manually label and validate the pulse peaks, the diastolic pulse onsets respectively. These are set within the raw, unfiltered time series to exclude the influence of filtering from the beginning. A second panel allowed the expert, however, to glance at the detrended and smooth signal for orientation. Due to the round peak contour, baseline wanderer and a large portion of noise, the identification of the exact peak positions is however ambitious. Since the peak is not always located at the exact local maximum, labeling is also subject to intuition, grounded in the expert's experience. Remaining inaccuracies due to imperfect label placement are however statistically compensated through the large number of peaks.
In total, the expatriator has manually set and validated 21,806 labels. The annotations cover 97% of the dataset, so 278 of the original 286 minutes. On the left, you can see the distribution of the instantaneous heart rates, the reciprocal of the individual interbeat intervals. An ideal dataset would uniformly cover the entire range of the natural heart rate, from 30 to 200 beats per minute. This would, however, be accompanied by a considerable health risk for the subjects at the lower and especially at the upper boundaries. The performed activities increase the average heart rate from about 73 beats per minute at rest to 106 beats per minute on the stepper. At the same time, the standard deviation between the subjects increases as well. By means of the annotations, we first investigated the effect of filtering on the peak positions in the raw signal. In this way, the maximum achievable accuracy of algorithms can be estimated. We applied 40 times 40 non-equally distanced filter configurations to all time series. We then tracked the displacement of the local maxima associated with the labeled peaks. On the right, you can see the displacement error for the subset of rest. With an increasing average heart rate, here for squat, you can see that the optimal region shifts along the x-axis of the lower cutoff, but here for step, it also shifts along the y-axis of the upper cutoff. Consequently, the optimal filter configuration, here marked with a pink cross, is a trade-off from these three cases. To finally evaluate the effect of filtering on algorithms' performance, we applied two popular algorithms to the pre-processed time series. On the one hand, the algorithm by Carlin et al. from 2012, and on the other hand, the recent algorithm by von Gend et al. from 2019. To benchmark their performance, we used the two metrics F1 score and distance error. For Carlin's algorithm, the illustration of the F1 score on the left and the distance error on the right show a relatively smooth and homogeneous plateau. The local optima are marked with a blue cross. The multiplication of the two normed metrics allows to find a trade-off. The optimum meets both requirements and is located at the pink cross. Because less filtered and hence more noisy signals significantly increase the number of peak candidates, Van Gens' algorithm required a lower cutoff of at least 0.5 Hz. The F1 score on the left and the distance error on the right show a rather complex structure. Again, the multiplication of the two normed metrics allows to find a trade-off, marked with the pink cross. For each filter configuration, we furthermore determined the optimal window size. For Carlin's algorithm, the optima are relatively homogeneous and remain constant until the lower cutoff crosses the heart rate. In contrast, the optimal window sizes of Van Gens' algorithm are more heterogeneous and vary widely along the filter configurations. In the optimal configuration, Carlin's algorithm prefers a window size in the order of 34 samples or 86 milliseconds. In contrast, von Gens' algorithm requires a larger window in the order of 270 samples or 676 milliseconds. Both algorithms work only adequately with filtered band-limited signals. Carlin's algorithm is, however, more tolerant to a wider frequency range, while von Gens' algorithm prefers a narrow passband. In the optimal configuration, von Gens' algorithm outperforms Carlin's algorithm in terms of the F1 score. Carlin's algorithm might, however, still be the preferred choice for very resource-constrained devices since it is less complex and requires only a small window of samples to be held available in the memory. Especially in terms of the distance error, the advanced algorithm of Van Gent allows, however, the significantly more precise location of the pulse peaks. We encourage researchers to use a dataset of Biagetti et al. in combination with our supplementary annotations to benchmark their own algorithms as well as to apply machine learning approaches. The dataset as well as more information are available on our website. Thank you for your interest in this topic. We are happy to answer any questions, so do not hesitate to contact us.